Good evening, good evening, welcome. It is Wednesday night, We're ready for Wednesday Night Live. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to get started here in just a little bit. We're going to be diving into Exodus chapter 17 tonight. So when you get in, go ahead and grab your Bible and go ahead and turn on over there. That is Exodus chapter 17. We're continuing our journey with the children of Israel as, as they march through the wilderness on the way to the promised land. Hey, when you get in, say hello. Let me know who all is here, who all is hanging out at Wednesday night church tonight. And we're going to get... Uh, we're going to get this thing shared in a couple of places. We just want to say hello. If you're here, you can go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know. Say hello in the comments. And that would be amazing. We would appreciate that. Hope you have had a great Wednesday. It has been a beautiful day outside. I hadn't had a chance to get out much, but uh, what I could see was absolutely amazing. So how was your Wednesday? How in the world have you been? Do you guys uh, have a safe day? Good, uh, good things going on? Let me see here. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, Miss Denise is just showing me something. I'll share here in just a little bit. Let me see here. There is Mary Weddington. Hello, Miss Mary. Hey, Johnny Smith. What in the world are you doing, Johnny? Glad you are here. Sandy and Jack is here. Pam is here. That means uh, Pam, now maybe you guys got all the way up into Illinois today. I know you're traveling. Miss Denny is here. Tommy Hanner, how you doing, brother? Glad Tommy Hanner is here. Uh, like I said, go ahead and hit that share button. Share it with your friends, with your family. And uh, every time that you hit the like button, every time that you comment, or every time that you share, all you're doing is you are sending this out. Johnny Smith has jokes tonight. He is watching me. He's watching the preacher. You are a smart man, buddy. I don't know what I would do without you. Tommy Gray is in the building. Glad you were here, Mr. Tommy. So glad to see you tonight hanging out with me. Uh, again, we're headed into Exodus 17 here shortly. Oh, I got to turn that volume down. Uh, into Exodus 17, really a, a very interesting uh, uh, passage that we are going to take a look at. Um, let me see here. Miss Judy Davis has just got in. Folks, uh, we want to want to make sure that we pray for Judy Davis. She is in uh, Four City Hospital, and she is uh, waiting on a room at Baptist East, and so she is going to be headed over there. Uh, let me see here. Miss Pat is here. All right. Good to see Miss Pat. Timmy Long in the building. What are you doing, Timmy? I have missed you, buddy. Missed you and your family. I uh, hope all is well. I hope uh, you are staying safe and uh, being very prosperous in this time. I look forward to seeing you, uh, hopefully, Lord willing, real soon. Let's see. Um, uh, yes, Ms. Denny, she's obviously she's watching from the hospital. Uh, man, all kinds of people coming in here. Hello, hello, hello. Pam, you said something. I just went by. Miss Faye is watching with me. Hello, Miss Faye. Uh, glad that you are watching as well. Lots of people here. Uh, we've got everything shared on my end. Uh, how about you guys? Have you hit that share button? Have you got it out? Uh, if you are in here and you have not had a chance to say hello, please go ahead and do that. Um, so glad the Grays are hanging out with us tonight. Uh, such an honor to do that. Who else is here? Let's see. Um, boom shakalaka. Let me see here. Bop, 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 bop. Miss Dina. There's Dina Smith is here. Glad to see Miss Dina. So that means that she is having to deal with Johnny in the house tonight. So bless your heart, Miss Dina. Bless your heart. Let's see. She says she has good reception there. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, you got to get to where you got good reception, I guess. Uh, so that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, we want to again. We want to. Uh, we want to remember Miss Judy as she is waiting on uh, a room to, to open up there in Baptist East. She is going to go over there and see her cardiologist. So we want to pray for her for transportation. And we want to pray for all of the doctors and nurses that are going to be over there. Miss Rita Johnson has just uh, logged in. Glad to see you, Miss Rita. That'll be Miss Rita and probably Mr. Bobby. I hope you guys have had a wonderful Wednesday. Yes, Miss Dana, we got to pray for you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, still waiting on some folks to kind of jump in, say howdy. Let me see who all uh, might be coming in here. Uh, I've got my coffee. It's fresh, it's hot, and it's strong, and my Bible is ready to go at Exodus 17. So uh, go ahead and get on in here, say hello. Uh, uh, all of that good stuff. Miss Denise is hanging out here beside me. She uh, has just got through talking to Miss Judy, 
And so I uh, wanted to go ahead and pass that along. We do have some additional prayer requests tonight, folks. We want to uh, remember David and Becky Lawson and their family uh, and the loss of, of uh, David's brother, such a tragic accident. And so, uh, excuse me, tragic situation, I'll, I'll say that word. Uh, continue to pray for uh, David and his family. I would greatly appreciate it. Beverly McGraw has pulled up a chair and is hanging out with us tonight. Good to see you. Miss Beverly, you and Mr. Dan, I hope you guys are doing well, taking care of your folks there at Magnolia Pines. Hope all is safe and trying to protect your sweet people there uh, at Magnolia Pines. Such a lovely place. If you've not had a chance to visit with them, you need to go do that. We had a Christmas party there and it was so, so precious. And they were such gracious hosts, such a beautiful facility. So uh, if you do get a chance, go down and see them once this whole thing is over. I, I ask them for a good old-fashioned cup of coffee and just sit down and enjoy. Bobby Johnson has now pulled up a chair. Good to see you, Mr. Bobby. Hope you are doing well. Um, lots of folks, lots of folks coming in. Uh, so thankful for this opportunity to gather tonight and to study God's Word, to, uh, to hang out with each other. Uh, I want you to know I miss you. I love you, and uh, you know, hey, uh, it's uh, one day closer, right? We're one day closer to uh, to uh, being together. So let's just uh, let's count those days. Um, uh, we are again. We're going to Exodus 17. So if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn that over, because that's where we're going to be at uh, tonight for just a little bit. We're not going to cover the entire chapter. We're going to break it apart into two sections. So tonight we're talking about water from the rock. Water from the rock. And so, uh, uh, very interesting passage of scripture, really, if you just want to know the truth. So, uh, I hope you do have your Bibles. Uh, is there any additional prayer request that we want to uh, make sure that we get out tonight? If there is, would you please leave those in the comments as uh, we continue just to kind of hang out for a minute? Let's get those prayer requests out there. Any prayer requests, also, any praises. Okay, any praises that uh, that you would like to share? Just some good news. I mean, what has God done for you? You know, we hear a lot of negativity in the world, especially with this virus and it's all bad. No, no, no. What's God doing in your life? What is God doing? What's God done for you? That's what we want to talk about. So, uh, uh, come on in, say hello, and uh, give us your prayer request if you if you have any, or if you have uh, any praises that you would like to share. I would love uh, to hear from you. So. Uh, uh, go ahead and, and let me have it. Let's see, Norval Casey. That's right. Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, Norval Casey had successful back surgery on Monday. I visited with him this morning, and uh, he is doing much, much better. Uh, he is up now on a walker, so praise the Lord for that. And uh, Miss Faye actually had, uh, uh, you could tell there was a sense of peace in her voice uh, today. So uh, uh, just continue to pray for Norval and for Faye in that healing process and that uh, God would continue to uh, to heal fast and would uh, would bring them right back to their wanted health. Okay, others, uh, more prayer requests, uh, just something good that, that's going on. Go ahead and let's uh, let's let's share that. Um, while you're while you're writing, I'll let you know that we got uh, some masks today that uh, Pam dropped off uh, to the church in Wheatley. Wheatley Baptist Church uh, is going to be using masks in their service, or I have them available on Sunday, and so we were able to provide that for them. So praise the Lord for that. And thank you for your servant's heart, Pam Jones. You have been amazing getting those out. Mary Weddington, thank you for all the masks that you've done. Denny Edwards, blessed to be a part of an active church family. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, we are doing our best to stay active, to stay connected, to stay moving forward. And thank you very much for that. Anything that you can do on your end that you can do to uh, stay connected, to contact one another, to reach out, whether it's by phone, by text, by Facebook, it really doesn't matter. And then uh, I, want you to, uh, I want you to go ahead and to, to use everything that we're putting up on social media as a means of discipleship, as a means for growth. And so uh, if it's just simple questions, go ahead and answer. If it's, it's uh, videos, go ahead and watch. Uh, just get in, get involved and uh, get connected. Those are just uh, excellent ways. Let's see, Miss Rita. Uh, my brother-in-law, Gary Bradshaw, got a good report. Thank you all for your prayers. Thank you, Miss Rita, for sharing that. Let's continue to pray for uh, Miss Rita's brother-in-law. That's Gary. Let's see, Pam. Shannon is back from Chicago. He is in quarantine. If his tests come back negative, he will be allowed to come home. Praise the Lord. 
Okay, praise the Lord. So uh, uh, we want to pray that his tests are negative. He gets out of quarantine and that he gets to go back home to Melissa uh, and to the family. So we, uh, we want to continue to pray for that. Other prayer requests, other praises. Uh, what all is God doing in your life? What is God showing you? Uh, during this time, this is a very unique time in our history. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll look back uh, in years to come, especially our children, our grandchildren are going to look back in history books and they're going to talk about the, the, uh, you know, the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. And uh, you know, I'd like to be able to tell my grandson you know, some good things that came out of this. Uh, not all the negative, but I want to be able to tell Colson that there were some positive things and this is what it is. And so uh, I, I want you to be able to do that. So what are some good things that you're seeing? What are some good things that, that you would like to share, uh, not only with us right now, but what would you want to share to your children, your grandchildren about the positives that came out of the, uh, the, the COVID-19? Mary Weddington. Jonathan Weddington received a certificate for completing and passing to be a minister. That's right. You shared that with me. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, that is so, so very exciting. Uh, we want to pray for him as he begins his, his ministry, that God would use him in a very fresh and powerful way. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, others, other good news is, other good news, what God is doing, what is God showing you uh, in this pandemic? I, I tell you what, it has just been a... Uh, a eye-opening uh, time in, in my life and, and, and in my ministry. It's just been mind-boggling to me to back up and to see, you know, what God is doing and how he's doing it, how he has orchestrated what we're seeing today. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. Uh, uh, I have posted some really powerful articles the past couple of days about the church and and uh, this pandemic. And if you get a chance, drop on over there. I'd really like for you to read those articles there. Some are lengthy. One is a video, but there's a transcript of that video. Uh, I, I want to encourage each of you to please go over. I want you to read that and to allow God to speak to you through those because they are just, they're so spot on and so, so very, very powerful. So please, please do that. Any other prayer requests, any other uh, good news is that we want to share. Uh, several folks are beginning to pop in. If you are here, if I've not acknowledged you, uh, or if you're not uh, actually a part of uh, uh, you know our, our normal uh, Ridgewood family, hey, welcome to our online family. We love you. We thank you that you're here. But say hello to us so that we can get to know you a little bit better. A real quick hello, maybe where you're watching from. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, if uh, you're you know, watching from somewhere else other than here in uh, you know, Four City, St. Francis County, uh, or in, in this Delta area, we'd just love to know where you're from. Okay, it's kind of, a, kind of good for us to kind of say, hey, you know, we have some folks that were watching from here. We kind of connected with them. So, uh, hey, just know that you're not a passerby. All right, I know there's a lot of times that these videos just pop up on people's, uh, people's news feeds, and I, and I get that. But, uh, you know, if you're here, if you're taking the time to watch, we want you to know that we care about you. And we also want you to know that God loves you and that we're here to talk about what God has to say and how he is directing us. So uh, uh, we, just want, uh, we just want you to, to join in. Timmy Long is in Pine Bluff. Uh, oh, my goodness, Timmy. Timmy, that is a major hot spot in our state. Please, please be careful. Uh, be safe going home. Johnny? Johnny is in Pine Tree. Johnny's in Pine Tree. Johnny, what are you doing in Pine Tree tonight? Oh my goodness. Uh, folks down in Pine Tree having a good, good day. Uh, I haven't talked to their pastor in a while. I need to talk to him, Brother Danny Brar. Uh, okay, any other prayer requests, any other good news that we would like to share before we open with prayer and then we are going to dive into God's word as we go to look at the water in the rock. So great to be with my church family. Teresa Young, I'm so glad to see you tonight, lady. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your daughter and for your husband. And let me just go ahead and say this right now. Y'all need to get ready. Tomorrow morning, uh, I'm going to be posting another video uh, of Billy Marie that uh, she has recorded another special song for us. And so we are going to be... Uh, Posted. I thought, Johnny Smith, Johnny, what? I thought you asked where we were from, not where we are. You're good. Uh, you're good. Okay. Uh, and again, Billy Marie. Y'all ready to, to listen to another Billy Marie song? That'll be tomorrow morning. Uh, please, please be on the lookout for that. And when you do, hey, hit that share button and, uh, and let her know. Okay. When that thing posts, 
Uh, get in the comments and tell her how much you love that girl and how much you appreciate her and uh, how much you're, you're so thankful for uh, her and her gift that she shares with us and for her, uh, her, her music ministry that she has. So, uh, so please do that. That'll be tomorrow. All right. Uh, okay, we're going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to dive in to God's Word. Let's, uh, let's, let's pray tonight, okay? Father, we love you tonight. We thank you. We thank you for each one that is here. We thank you for the homes that's represented all across the area, and Father, all across the country, and whoever may watch it in the future. Father, tonight we lift up specifically these that have been mentioned. We lift up Miss Judy to you tonight. Father, we pray that you will just uh, uh, give a speedy process to get her to Memphis, to get her, Father, taken care of, looked at. And Father, anything that needs done that you will work through the doctors, get it taken care of. And Father God, get her home. Father, we thank you for the successful surgery of Norval. And on his back, and we just uh, we pray that you will continue to heal that man, love on that family, Father. Just continue to give them strength as they are are working through through this uh, the, this treacherous time of surgery. Father, be with Tommy Hankins as he is preparing for back surgery. We ask you to be with uh, with him and and with Tammy as they prepare for that. Father, we ask you right now that uh, for Shannon, who is in quarantine, that you would you would make that COVID test negative. God, that he would be able to come out of quarantine and, Father, get back home to his family. Father, lots of praises that's taking place here. We thank you for that. And, Father, lots of goodness that's going on that are not even shared. But, Father, we know that you know. And, Father, we just want to be cautious to say thank you for all the little things that we take for granted. Father, we ask you tonight that you would watch over us, protect us, and Father, that even though we are not sitting in the same room, but we are one body and one spirit, and Father, that we have come to worship you and to study your word. Father, it is not about a, a, a brick and mortar building. It is about the body of Christ, and that is who we are. We are the church, and Father, we, we need to know that. We need to, to love on that, and Father, we just need you to hold us close and keep reinforcing that to us. Father, bless our services throughout the week. Bless our services coming Sunday, Father, as we prepare to go back out on our parking lot, Father, for another drive-in outdoor service. Father, I'm asking right now that you would just hold back the clouds, hold back the storms. Father, let our folks get on the parking lot, God, that we can, we can come together in our vehicles or maybe sit outside our vehicles. And Father, that we can worship you right outside so that the world can hear. Father, I pray even now, that you would just work through all the technology, that you would keep all the bugs clean. Father, that you would uh, not even allow Satan near our campus. Father, there, there would be a hedge of protection around our entire campus that Satan can't even penetrate to get in there to us. Father, tonight, for those traveling, we ask for safety. Father, for those of us tonight that are home, we ask you for, for a night of peace, a night of rest, and a night of wisdom. God, forgive me where I fail you. And God, I just pray that you will continue to lead me as I just seek, Lord, to, to, to lead our church. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Oh, amen and amen. Okay, lots of folks now are coming in ready to see Billy Marisa. Y'all, this kid. That's all I'm going to say. Such a sweet kid. Okay, Exodus 17. Y'all over there? All right. Exodus 17 and good, strong French roast coffee. Boy, it's hard to beat that, right? All right, here we go. Exodus 17. What we're going to do, folks, is we're going to read the first seven verses, and then we're going to break this thing down. The first seven verses. Now, I want us to remember what took place last week, just as a, a real brief review. Remember that last week was when we saw God begin to to provide the daily manna for six days a week. And then on the sixth day, they were together enough for two days so that they would rest on the Sabbath. We also saw God's provision of quail begin to come in. So all of that is behind us. They're out of bondage. They've crossed the Red Sea. Uh, they, they've already done a little bit of migration here. They're moving a little bit. And so God has now begun this major uh, provision and how he is providing for them, how he is protecting them. And that brings us now to verse one of chapter 17. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, underline this phrase, according to the commandment of the Lord. Okay, powerful statement there. 
according to the commandment of the Lord, and they camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Does that sound familiar? Have we read statements very similar to that over the past several weeks? And that answer is absolutely yes. Verse 4. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with these people? Now, if you don't think that does not resonate with an awful lot of church leaders, okay, that's a powerful statement. What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Folks, he, he's scared. He does not know what to do. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you, you ready for this? Some of the elders of Israel. In other words, you take the leadership of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Oreb, and you will strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And so he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, Massa and Meribah, because of the contention of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Okay, powerful passages of, of scripture that's here. There's so much going on. Uh, when we begin to break this down, okay, when we begin to, to look at, at, uh, at verse one here, we're seeing that they are leaving the wilderness of, of, of sin, and that's the name of this location, okay, the wilderness of sin. And this is, this is where, as I just said, this is where the, the beginning of, of the daily provision of manna began, uh, the daily provision of quail. It's here the, the thing, and I told you this right out of the chute here, is, is underline this phrase, according to the commandment of the Lord. Folks, we have to understand that God is still guiding them, okay? This is not the children of Israel just going on whoever, whenever. This is not Moses on a whim, okay, going whoever, whenever. This is God guiding his people. And so we need to understand that every place they go, every situation they encounter, that God has ordained this. God has allowed this to happen. And so now then, we need to use this in the context as to what's going to take place, all the certain situations, how they're going to complain, okay? God guided them there. This is under God's direction, okay? Now, we know from previous you know, previous chapters we talked about this. So I'm going to give you a, a question to kind of chew on tonight. And I don't have the answer. It's not a trick question. Just something you think about. We know from previous chapters that the Lord guided them how? By a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Okay? Now, we know that. We studied that. Okay. My question to us tonight is, is the pillar still here? Is it still here at this point in chapter 17? I'll let you think about that, okay? Again, it's not a trick question. I'm just throwing it out there, okay? Is the pillar still here? Okay, it's interesting to note that, that God is not in a hurry at all to bring the, the Israelites from where they are into the promised land of Canaan. Have you noticed that it's almost like God is... Uh, uh, it's it's kind of like he's trying to take them through a boot camp, if you will, just to get them ready. Uh, I just uh, I just know that God has plan here. God has purpose. Uh, the children of Israel here they're camped at Rephidim, but what do we see? There is no water, and not only just just not just no water, but there's no water for themselves. There's no water for their children. There's no water for their livestock, and we saw that back in. 
you know, in verse three. Okay, Denny says that she thinks so. They were still on the move. Okay, uh, I like that thought. Again, not a trick question. Just wanted to throw that out there and uh, and let you let you kind of chew on that. Okay, something important here. Okay, God intentionally led them to the place where there is no water. Just like he led them back in Exodus 14. Okay, hold, hold on. I'm going to go back there. You can if you want to. In Exodus 14, verse 1, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pahehiroth, between Migdal and the sea. Opposite Baal Zephon, you shall camp before it by the sea. Folks, God took them directly into that cul-de-sac of death where the only way out was the Red Sea or right back up that, that one way in and one way out situation back to where the Egyptian army was. You remember that? So God put them in that situation. And right here in the 17th chapter, God put them in this exact same place. So he knew what he was doing. He knew that he was putting them in a place where there was no water. And so I think that we need to understand something, okay? I think we need to understand something. There is going to be times in our life, there's going to be situations in our life, and we may be in that right now, to where we're trying to question, God, why are you doing this to us? Why? Folks, God has a purpose for this. You know, there is not a single one of us, and there's not a person that I have talked to that enjoys what is going on with this virus, okay? I, and I get that. But we need to understand that, that God has ordained this to be here at this moment, at this time. He, he didn't do it out of a fluke. He didn't do it just as a joke. He did it because there is a plan. This is God's plan. And so we have to understand that. And you may be going through something in your personal life and you're trying to think of, well, why has God done this to me? Why has he put me in this position? Why has he allowed this to happen to me? Why is this happening to my kids? Uh, why is this going on with my grandkids? Why am I sick? You know, it'd be really easy, and I'm going to use a couple of our, of our folks tonight that, uh, that, that have been sick, and Miss Judy, if you're still watching, you know I love you, but, but let me just say this. It would be very easy for Miss Judy to say, well, why is this happening to me? Okay, those are situations that we need to understand that God has allowed, okay? There's a plan, there's purpose, and we just have to trust him. We have to be so keen to listen to God to understand his plan and his purpose. And at this point in chapter 17, and we're already beginning to see that rinse leather repeat cycle, is these people do not want to listen to God. They did not want to listen to God at all. Okay, let's keep moving. I, I got to come back to this. Why would God take them to a place where there was no water? Have you ever thought about that? Why would God take them to that place? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I just think, and this is one of the things that, that I get, and it, and it, just, it convicts me like, like mad. It really convicts me. Is how quickly, how quickly this group of people continues to forget how God has and continued to provide for them. I mean, it was almost like they wake up in a brand new world every day and they, they forget what took place yesterday or the day before or the, a couple of weeks back as to how God provided for them. And I get convicted of that because I'm the exact same way. I mean, I'm, I may be going on through life, you know, just lickety split here and just happy go lucky and all that. And then all of a sudden something happened. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa is me. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Why is this happening to me? And then it's easy to forget all of the good things and all of the blessings that God just continues to pour out on me and my family. What do you think? What do you think, Johnny? A precursor to the living. Well, that's a great statement, Johnny. That's very true. That's very true. But do you get convicted like that? Oh, I do. Oh, man, I do. I do. And it makes me feel about that tall. Okay, just to be honest with you. Because then I stop and think, oh God, you're so gracious to me. You you pour out your, your riches on me so much, so fast that I just I just can't even comprehend it. God loves you, He loves me, and He provides for us. And so many times, folks, we just simply let it go. 
I know your preacher does, okay? I do. I'll be the first to admit it. And it's something I'm working on because I, I don't want to be that way. I want to be gracious. I want to be uh, ever aware of God's continual blessings okay, on me. We'll see you catch that. We, we take things for granted, and we have to be reminded where God probably well, is. You're true. That's very true, Kathy. Uh, there's, that's a very, very, very true statement. Okay. The Israelites were having trouble learning to trust God. God. But this time though, this was more than just uh, complaining. This was more than just, you know, grumbling. Okay. These folks were now at the angry stage. When we look back in verse four, we saw that, that they were literally about to stone. They're about to kill Moses. Okay. They were literally about to take Moses' life because they were blaming man and not God. They were not taking this to God, knowing that God led them there. They were blaming the man who was leading them. This was true rebellion. This was defiancy right here, in all honesty. Now, it was bad enough that the children of Israel, you know, they argued with Moses. They demanded that he provide for them water. And then, you know, Moses is now accusing the people of basically putting God to a test. We saw it in verse 2. You know, when he said, you know, why do you tempt the Lord? So it, it's the same repetition. The people blame Moses. Moses cries out to God. Okay. People blame Moses. Moses cries out to God. Okay. Something to remember here. Moses' life was characterized by prayer and by turning to God for solutions to prayer. And I want to give you several biblical examples of this, okay? And several times. Uh, the, the first batch is all going to be in the book of Exodus. Okay, so this is Exodus. The first reference is Exodus 15, verse 25. That's Exodus 15, verse 25. The second is Exodus 32, verses 30 through 32. Exodus 32, verses 32, 32. Let me repeat both of those. Again, both in Exodus 15, 25, and then 32, 30 through 32. And then there are several passages in the book of Numbers that I want to give you tonight. This is all in Numbers, okay? Chapter 11, verses 2 and 11. That's chapter 11, verses 2 and 11. Chapter 12, verse 13. And finally, chapter 14, verses 13 and 19. So let me repeat those for numbers. Chapter 11, verse 2 and verse 11. Chapter 12, verse 13. And then finally, chapter 14, verses 13 and 19. Okay, all, all good references. I encourage you to take those, read those, put those in your notes and study through those the, this week. Okay, look at God's response. He says, go on before the people. Go on before the people. See, what, what we need to see here is that this is, this is showing that Moses was not going to retreat, okay? He was not going to back down. He was their primary leader. And so when when water was provided from the rock here that, we're, that we've already seen, we're going to dive into here in a minute, the people had to follow Moses to get it. Okay, so this, this is all a plan. What, what was the purpose for the elders to go with Moses? Any thought? Uh, what, what was the purpose for, for the elders to go? You know, verse five, uh, he was told to take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Do you think, do you think that it's possible that with Moses taking the rod that he had, and, and if you remember, you remember how instrumental that rod was back with those plagues? You know, with the plagues in Egypt before they were released, when they were still in bondage, because even though they were in bondage, they saw all of this. They knew exactly what was taking place and how Moses dealt with Pharaoh, and he had this rod in his hand. Do you think that the children of Israel at that point might have been thinking, oh my goodness, there might be a plague about to come on us? You know, he, Moses got the rod, and he's taking the lead of that. Is, is this, I mean, could, could this have been a thought? And again, I get not a trick question. I'm just throwing this out here because I want you to be able to see a bigger picture. I want you to dive into this as we're literally visualizing 
what is taking place, that Moses has taken the leaders of Israel and they are going out to this rock where God's told them to go and he told him to take this rod with him, the power of that rod that's, that's going. Okay, verse 16. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock. Now, uh, if you remember earlier, I mentioned about the pillar. Was it still there? Is it not? Is this a reference to the pillar? Is this a reference that God uh, was going to manifest himself still or possibly again in a pillar that is on the rock? Now, we do not have that verbatim. We do not have that in terminology, but this is just my thought to you uh, to, to maybe chew on it a little bit, to maybe dive a little bit deeper, because here again, this is something that we don't know. What we do know is that God's word says, behold, I will stand before you there on the rock. Okay, got it. It's funny how right in the middle of their emotional breakdown that the children of Israel were having, that they couldn't even see the evidence of God leading them right before their eyes. And he was all over it. He never left them. He was right there. He was about to, to do something miraculous again. And so Moses was about to strike the rock, causing the water to come from it. And when he did, boom, here comes the water. The rock, the word rock here, is one of the titles of God that is, that is sometimes found in the Old Testament. One example of that is in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. That's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. Uh, Paul, Paul speaks of the rock as representing Christ in the New Testament. And, uh, we, and we also see that as the true source of the water. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. 10, verse 4, 1 Corinthians. Um, you know, Moses striking the rock has been suggested by many theologians as a picture or a type of the crucifixion of Christ. I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, I find that interesting to really see that. And so then later on, uh, you know, on Mount Sinai, when Moses was told to speak to the rock in order to receive the water, uh, and by the way, the reference to that's Numbers 20, Numbers 20, verses 2 through 13. He struck the rock in anger, and when he did, he disobeyed God, and he was just you know destroying that picture that was all taking place there. The rock must certainly not be, and I'll use the word here, smitten, must not be smitten a second time. We find reference to that in the New Testament in Romans 6, verses 9 and 10, and in Hebrews chapter 6, verse Six, and then verse seven. This is uh, this is very interesting. Let me get back over there. Verse seven. So he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, Massa and Meribah, literally meaning testing and quarreling. That was the names that were given to this place, all in reference to the children of Israel. The Israel's actions were a testing of God. The they were they had a demand that God prove His presence among them. Uh, that in and of itself proved their lack of faith in God. Uh, Israel's actions revealed their lack of patience. Their response revealed a lack of obedience. And at, at Massa and at Meribah, the children of Israel doubted God's presence among them. It's almost as if they thought, he's gone. Does that, does that remind us of ourselves? Man, powerful, powerful stuff. The thing is here, the children of Israel were thirsty and they wanted and they demanded water to the point of mass rebellion, including the possibility of killing Moses. Wow. The man who led them out of bondage, who now they're continuing to want to blame on a regular basis. Why did you do that? Why would you bring us out here just for us to die? Continues to amaze me. And when we back up, and we take a, a bigger look here that it's not the first time that the children of Israel needed water. We saw that just a couple weeks ago, and it's certainly not the first time that God provided. Now, the need for water is back here. But my question is, is water really what they're crying out for? You think about that. Is water 
what they're really crying out for. What are your thoughts? That's a heavy question. That's a heavy handed question on top of that. Is water what they're really crying out for? What are your thoughts? Please share it with me. We're going to wait just a couple of seconds, let this delay catch up. Because I want to hear your thoughts. I want others to hear your thoughts. Oh, we got several other folks that's joined in. So good to see Becky McGraw. Lost son is here. So good to see you, sweet Becky. Jeff Young has made it home. Glad you are here. I see Howard Miller has made it in. I can't see anybody else at this point that's made it in. So that's uh, that's the ones. Mary Whittington, not really wanted to hear of God. No, assurance of God's presence. Oh, okay. So, oh, now, now we've got two people that says that... Uh, Water was not what they were crying out for. Okay, now we got a discussion going. Brian Ponder's in the building. Glad to see you, Brian. So uh, Mary Weddington says, no, no, it wasn't really water that they were crying out for. Uh, really wanted to hear from God. Miss Denny says, no, it wasn't the water. They wanted assurance of God's presence. What say you? What are your thoughts tonight? Was water really what they were crying out for? Come on, let's hear it. Pam, what did Pam say? They wanted the prom... Oh, that's moving too quickly. Uh, they wanted the promised land and their way like yesterday. That's, that's exactly right. Johnny, they're crying out for their comfort zone to be restored as miserable as it was. And there you go. Okay, Johnny's on it. So great, 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 great. Great words here. Great, great insight. What say you? Was it really water that they were crying out for? Was it really water? What is it? What was it? These are great answers. I love this input. I love it. What What say you? What are your thoughts? Might have to grab a couple extra cups of coffee for that one, folks. Was it water that they were really, really crying out for? See, here's the thing. Did they need water? Yeah, they did. But what they were crying out for, you ready for this? <laughs> John chapter four. Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. Verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Church, what they needed, what they needed was God because only God was going to satisfy their taste. Only God was going to satisfy their thirst. And the same as it is here. We can cry out for this or this or this, okay? And it doesn't matter. But what we need, what we need is God. Because only God can satisfy our thoughts. Nothing else can. It will continue to leave us thirsty. And until we get that, we're going to continue to have that dry taste. Like we normally do. You know, have you ever been really thirsty and, and you kind of got cotton mouth and you couldn't get to a drink of water fast enough or a, uh, you know, a glass of sweet tea or a cup of coffee or whatever the case may be or Gatorade or whatever it is that you drink because you needed something to quench that thirst. Let, let, me, let me tell you something, okay? Our soul thirst for God. And only God can satisfy that thirst. 
And that's exactly what the children of Israel needed. And God was right there with them all the time. And they never once saw it. God had just turned the Red Sea. He turned that, that seabed into a dry desert to allow them to walk across into safety. And right now, he had water flowing from a rock in the middle of the desert. God will provide for his people. There's no question. But what you and I need to do is to understand that water, any type of food, and you can fill in the blank whether it's a cheeseburger, pizza, steak, chicken, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's fame, fortune, money, power, position, prestige, none of that, none of that will quench our thirst. Our thirst will only be quenched by a holy God. Folks, I pray you have an incredible night. Thank you so much for joining me. We will continue, Lord willing, our, our journey with the children of Israel next week as we uh, continue and maybe we'll wrap up chapter 17. I encourage you to read it and to study it and uh, possibly come back with some questions as we begin. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be in here and uh, we'll have another coffee and chat in the morning. We're having some good times, by the way. We had a great time this morning. Um, and that'll be tomorrow, tomorrow night at seven o'clock. If you can, we'd love to invite you to our campus and Johnny Smith is going to lead us a Bible study around the, uh, the fire pit out back. It's going to start at seven. Uh, we've got uh, some stumps out there. Bring your chairs if you'd like. Uh, if you can't make it and I understand if you would choose not to come, um, I'm going to do my best to, to do a Facebook live from that while brother Johnny teaches. And then Friday morning, we're going to have another another chat. Uh, Sunday morning, Lord willing, weather permitting, we're going to be right back out on our parking lot. Be praying for that. Be praying for great weather. Uh, be praying that God will use uh, our time together, whether it be here online or gathered in the parking lot, for his will, for his glory, for his honor. Because what we want to do is we want to be able to take the name of Jesus and the presence of a holy God into the Arkansas Delta unlike anything that's ever been seen before. And it takes us all thinking, working, and rowing in the same direction. That's our goal. That's our mission. Folks, I'm out of here. Good night. I love you guys so much. If you need anything, please let me know. I'll see you in the morning for coffee and Bible chat. Good night, everyone.